homemade malt balls. I know what you're thinking. Why preserve a dollar box? Why is this worth making? Well, curiosity aside, I actually grew up on Maltesers first, which I very subjectively but firmly believe to be superior. Until I later got hooked on this stuff at Wegmans. At eight dollars a pound and disappearing almost instantly at my house, the cheapo in me decided it's worth making. Currently valuing my labor at below minimum wage because it took me a dozen tries going through the honeycomb, sea foam, and sponge candy method, as well as different temperatures for the mini meringue method. Hit the like button if comparison experiments are your thing. I'm sharing my experience so you can avoid the same mistakes and decide which method works best for you. First, the honeycomb candy. Start with sugar, water, and corn syrup, and flavor it with malted milk powder, which is made from wheat flour, malted barley, and milk. Which, along with heated syrup, make up the primary ingredients in commercial malt balls. Following the standard honeycomb candy ratio, I combined half a cup of sugar, quarter cup of water, two tablespoons of corn syrup, and one tablespoon honey, and brought it to a boil. The water is just here to dissolve the sugar and heat everything evenly. It will fully evaporate before the sugar heats to a hard crack stage, which is about 300 Fahrenheit. Then I added half a teaspoon of baking soda, which will react immediately and foam up the candy mixture. Then I added two tablespoons of malted milk powder, stirred until mixed in, and poured the whole thing into a container to harden. I tried using a small round chocolate mold. Let me just say, don't do this. The candy will harden very fast. You'll probably end up with a sticky mess and deflate air bubbles in the process, which will cause the candy to set way too dense and hard. Also, the color is too dark to be right. So take two. The next thing I tried was the buffalo sponge candy method, which looked like they have the right color and texture. This calls for gelatin. I used a teaspoon of water to bloom a quarter teaspoon of gelatin. Sprinkle the gelatin powder on top of water for quick and even absorption, and set aside for later. Combine sugar, water, and corn syrup again. Corn syrup is much easier to measure by scale. Nutritional labels are very handy for volume to weight conversion. Bring the candy mixture to a boil again, heat it to 300 Fahrenheit, and let it cool for a bit until bubbling settles down. Then I added bloomed gelatin. This will also foam up the mixture right away. Gelatin is a common stabilizer used in marshmallow making to trap air and make the end product fluffy. Now add half a teaspoon of baking soda. Stir until candy is light and add malted milk powder. This time I'm chilling it as a whole block. It turned out crunchy and brittle like a toffee, but clearly denser than I wanted. So I made another lighter batch using added vinegar from the sea foam candy method. The initial step and ingredients are all the same: heat sugar, water, corn syrup, and chill. Except this time, I bloomed gelatin in vinegar instead of water, which allows me to double the baking soda to increase leavening. So here we have one teaspoon of vinegar and one teaspoon of baking soda. Whisk until foamy, and heat up the whole mixture again. This will enlarge the air bubble and make the candy more porous and lighter. Immediately move this into a chilling dish while it is very hot. This time it came out very well in flavor and texture, but don't try to cut this neat with a knife. The biggest drawback with this method is that the exterior is very hard, even though the inside is soft and foamy. Just smash it with a hammer. The inside is the perfect crunch, but the edge sets firmly with almost no air bubbles. While making these in small mold will probably hurt your teeth. My guess is commercial ones are cut into round balls by machine. You can dip the crunchy candy in chocolate for a very similar taste. But if the round shape is important for your copycat, meringue is the way to go. Just one egg white will make a huge batch. You'll need a total of a quarter cup of sugar, but start with one tablespoon, plus optional tiny pinch of cream of tartar, which is a stabilizer that keeps your meringue from deflating. Now whip it up until you have a very stiff meringue. That won't fall if you flip the bowl upside down. Then add the rest of the sugar, and whip until sugar is fully incorporated, and you have a very thick meringue. You should feel a little resistance from the whisk, and egg whites should be sticky and pulls long, stiff peaks, almost like marshmallow fluff. Now add two tablespoons of malted milk powder and gently fold it in. 
just until it's evenly mixed in. Kind of like with a macaron batter, try to avoid overmixing and deflating the meringue too much. Once you see no more dry powder, please stop. Now fill the piping bag with a small round tip. Line it around the cup for easy filling. And get ready to pipe your tiny meringues. You can pipe them into little dots or Hershey's Kisses. Keep in mind that they will flatten as they bake and chill. So go a little taller than you would like the final meringue to look. My earlier batches were flatter than I would have liked, which you will see later. To get rid of the sharp tip, dip your finger in water and pat them down. This is of course optional. I've tried baking them slow and low at 210 Fahrenheit for an hour, and I've tried 280 Fahrenheit convection for 12 minutes. They all gave me similar taste and snaps. The higher temperature batches were darker. Weighing my need for the right color and my need to not wait forever, I recommend baking at 265 Fahrenheit for 15 to 20 minutes. One thing to avoid is making meringue in silicon mold. You'd think it would be neater and easier than piping, but they remain this sticky mess that just won't dry despite higher temperature and longer baking. Go with the piping. You will come out crunchy, milky, and just delicious even without any chocolate. They're not perfectly round, but you can put two halves together and stick them in a chocolate mold to hide any imperfections. Fill the mold with melted chocolate. The good thing about making your own mold balls is that you can use better chocolate. I'm using a Calabot 65% dark, which is my favorite baking chocolate. Give it a light tap to level the chocolate, drop in the meringue halves, and coat in chocolate with a toothpick or skewer. I used both my flatter batches and my taller batches because they really are all too delicious to waste no matter how poorly piped. With this silicone mold, one coating will always be somewhat a semi-sphere. You can turn it over and double coat for a more rounded mold ball. But even one coating is chocolate heavy as is. Also, I totally didn't have any leftover to double dip when these set. Just let them chill until hardened and they're ready to eat. I hope this video was informative to those of you who are thinking of making homemade mold balls. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this type of kitchen experiment. That's it for today. Good luck in the kitchen!